Hey, welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are painting a Necron warrior in the dynasty colors of the Zarakan dynasty. Hopefully I have said that word right. Zarakan, Zarakan. So anyway, as you can see, model is built. I've used some basin material and I primed it black. So let's dive on in. First up, we are using the Rune Lord Brass base color. Basically, I'm dry brushing this on. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to try and avoid a lot of the darker recesses that obviously need to stay black. I'm going to try and avoid as much of the gun as possible because I ideally want that all black too. And so I'm going to just aim for his body, his head, his shoulders, and just cover the whole body. As always, a quick reminder, this is for battle-ready looking figures. I don't do master classes. This is getting paint on your figures, having figures that look good from three foot away, and just having fun doing it. I don't want to get bogged down with multiple highlights and edge highlighting and line highlighting. That isn't for me. If you're looking for those videos, I can definitely recommend you some great channels. Just ask in the comments and I'll let you know. Otherwise, I hope you follow along. Hope you uh, drop me a comment. Let me know if you've got a channel as well. Love to see any work that you've done. And yeah, drop me a subscribe, drop me a follow. Hopefully you'll uh, pick up some new skills or you can teach me some new skills. I'm currently doing this model because the rest I'm painting up is my Nov Novak dynasty for a battle report on Monday but I just wanted to paint a different type of Necron. I've been painting a lot of silver, a lot of red. I just fancied doing the one that they show you in the magazine. Uh, in their example they do free base coats of this and they cover the entire model which seems a bit crazy to me but as they don't prime before painting they don't really have the black to go with straight away, so I guess I cut a corner there. I also get a different finish by dry brush and it's not as covered. It looks a bit more battle worn and aged than their version. Yeah, as you can see, I now have the entire model pretty well coated. So we will let this dry and move on to the next stage. Now for the dreaded next stage, Corax White. Now I got this in the magazine, maybe three months ago, might even be four months. This paint is already starting to go lumpy. I just hate Citadel white paint. It's not good. It lumps so quickly. I'm either having to thin it down, having to put full barons in it. It really annoys me. I need a better white. If you have any suggestions for a better white, let me know. But for this model, I'm going to hit up the eyes, I'm going to hit up some tubing and the glowy baubles inside the, uh, the gorse flare. These later on will be taking some green contrast paint. So I've got to make sure I get a nice hit of white on the important parts. And then because it's using contrast paint, you don't have to be super tidy because with it being Necrons, it kind of adds a glowing effect if you've messed up a little bit. Obviously, I tried to be as neat as possible. I don't want to make too much of a mess, but it's not the end of the world if you mess up. With the final spots of white done, we can put this down and let it dry, and I'll catch you for the next step. Now this next step I find boring, but it's important that you do it, and it is using a batten black. And basically I'm going to clean up anything that I messed up earlier. So mostly the gun, I'm going to go in on some of his leg joints, going to do arm joints, got to get the shoulder sockets. It's a lot of fiddly work that you really have to take your time with, otherwise you'll make more mistakes. And this is a process I struggle with. I don't like taking time. I like painting. I really do like painting, don't get me wrong. 
but I don't enjoy time consuming fiddliness. I like getting paint on the model, I like getting messy. But I also like something that looks half decent at the end of the day. So you have to do these steps now and again. So as you can see, I'm just picking up any of the battle damaged areas, like his uh, thigh bone. I'm also going to pick out the shoulder joints, which I've already done, the elbow joints, clean up a bit of the gun, get his spine, get the back, all that fun stuff. And it's already looking pretty cool. I've only done... There is technically three colors on the model, so it is tournament legal now. And it's not a bad scheme. I wasn't sure on it initially because it's a lot of gold versus a lot of silver. But now that I'm painting it and can see it in person, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm going to take this moment to say hit like, hit subscribe, drop me a comment. Is this a Dynasty E play? Uh, do you even play Necrons? What video should I do next? I've got a lot of painting videos coming up, but if you've got suggestions on what I should be painting, drop them in a comment. I'll respond. And with these final spinal cord nuggets getting painted, I'm sure there's probably a more technical name for it, but I like the sound of a nugget spine. We are pretty much done with the black. Oh, I don't like it. This took the most amount of time. I probably spent in total 20 minutes on this model, including drying time between each step. And doing that black base coat probably took the longest. And then I ended up missing the handle on the, uh, the gun anyway, as you can see from this angle. So the next step is going to be lead belcher. Lead Belcher is my go-to metallic paint. I'm not a huge fan of metallic paints, which is why this Necron army is pushing my patience to the extreme. But Lead Belcher gives a great effect. I've had no issue with it. I dry brush my main Necron force with it. I use contrast paint over it to give it a nice shiny metallic look. It works well. And for this step, I am going to cover these loose pipes that you can see here. I'm going to be using it on the, I forget what they're called now, the gun barrel. I'm going to use it on the muzzles, the spiky tip underneath, the recesses, and some of the cabling. Then I'm going to try and pick out his uh, stomach wiring that is hanging low. And also try and pick out some detailing in the neck area. It's annoying. <laughs> Just like the black paint step, but it has to be done. So with that stage complete, we now have what looks like a Necron Warrior. It's looking pretty good. I followed the stages except for dry brushing the initial paint. And now we get to have some fun with some Nun Oil. I love this stuff. I think this is the newest batch. I'm not sure. Here's the number. Work it out. It doesn't seem to work like my old stuff that I used to have. That may just be me forgetting what the old stuff was like. This seemed a lot thinner, a lot runnier. Not sure if I'm a fan of it, but it got the job done, I think. Basically going to load up my brush cover all the lead belcher sections with it and hopefully darken them down a little. And with that, we are reaching the halfway point of the paint scheme. As you saw then, we have the canoptic alloy going on next. They recommend using this on the Necron Warrior shoulder blades and face panel. Now, as I'm painting this on, I am struggling to see the difference. With the Rune Lord Brass, all I can say is it's a slightly lighter shade. I'm going to make sure that I get a good coverage on the shoulder blades and on the faceplate, so I do a couple of coats with this. It's only after I've probably done the second round that I appreciate that it is a lighter shade. Still very subtle, but 
it does help to move some of the focus to its face, which is cleverly done if that is actually the purpose of doing it. And this is now at the end of the second round. As you can see, it's slightly lighter. It's hard to tell with my paint and lights in this camera. But they are slightly lighter. It's a little bit more silvery than bronze or brass, I guess. And we are moving on to the next step, which is more dry brushing that I love to do. So we are using the Mechanicus Standard Gray. I'm going to go over the base with this, and I'm also going to try and use it to try and highlight some edges on the black. Not going to bore you with the whole stage of me doing this, but as you can see, I'm just trying to not completely cover the black, but just pick out some edging. I don't use tiny brushes. It's, this is the same brush I've used throughout painting this model. So it's clumsy edge highlighting, but I'm pretty sure you get the idea. It's just to try and pick out some areas that would catch the light. It just adds a bit more depth to the model, stops being boring black and just has a bit more character to it. Then when it comes to the base, it's simple dry brushing. So I'm not going to bore you by showing you all this. You get the idea. Most of you probably know how to paint better than me anyway. So let's move on. And through the magic of recording and editing the software, base is done, the annoying highlights are done. We are moving on to contrast paints. Now, I don't think I showed you the pot, but I am using Orc Flesh Green. And all you have to do is load up the brush and hit up anything that's painted white. I love contrast paints. You just slap it on, it will find its way. So I'm doing the back cable, whatever that is on the gun. I'm doing these baubles that are inside the gun barrel. Just making sure I cover all the white. I can be a bit sloppy because the black will just make the green go darker and it will give it a weird glow effect. This is so quick and easy. As long as you've got that white on, you've got no problems. And look at that, it's already causing a great effect. Catch the eyes. I decide to go over the tubing again, just to make it a little bit darker. Apart from that, we are pretty much finished. Given the model some, a chance to dry, I'm gonna do a proper video towards the end to let you see how it looks. But this is 20 minutes quick rough work. I hope you enjoyed. Give me a like, give me a subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for watching.